How about now? Can you hear me now? Loud. Okay. It's hurting my ears, Father. <laughs> you good now? Medium. Medium. All right. That's good to have. I'll take it. I'll take it, too. Ready, set, go. Atomic batteries to power. Everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. So the great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, I got a job for me. Meet me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if mom and dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Yesterday, Ellie bought you a present. Oh, my trouble seems wow. so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Oh when did you write that? I didn't write it. Paul McCartney wrote it. The Beatles. Who? Ah, what an interesting question. This is Douglas Viviani from Everything Old is New Again, and I'm here with our very own Sergeant Pepper himself, David Cohen. Yes, very happy to be here, Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we may have an interview down the line a little later on with a special guest. We'll see. But right now we're talking and listening to a little clip there from yesterday, the movie that's directed by Danny Boyle, who is Academy Award winner, best director for Slumdog Millionaire, and stars Hemish Patel, I'm not so sure we know who he is up till now, but he did a nice job with that movie. Something happened when my seven-year-old Leo and I saw this movie, and even before, Leo came to me, right, Leo, asking about the Beatles music a little more and more. And now that this movie's out, it seems that uh, maybe some kids from school have been talking about it here and there. It's made the Beatles contemporary, if you will. I think it's ignited, anyway, in my world, Beatlemania all over again. And Leo, you've been listening and learning more and more about the Beatles, and I'm enjoying the ride with you again. Leo Viviani is here with us in studio. Uh, I don't know if he's in a mood to talk, though. Leo, you want to say hello? Hi. Very good. Excellent. Now, today, we're going to explore a day in the life with and without the Beatles, proving you have a day trip down this long and riding, winding road to find out what is the revolution all about and to try to help find out, is there something more to this topic or should we just let it be? See what I did there, David? Yeah, you used something twice <laughs> up front and then again. <laughs> you, had, you had hundreds of Beatles songs to choose from, and you had to repeat it. But you didn't like the rest of it, though? The rest of it was okay. Uh, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, did you like that introduction? Uh, medium. A medium. All right, a medium. Well, all right. Well, I want to know, uh, Leo, a little bit, if you can ask, is there anybody in school you know, talk to you about the Beatles, or are you are the only one that's interested in the Beatles these days? No one talks about them. No, but what makes you interested in them? I don't know. You don't know, but you do like them, right? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite song these days? I don't know. You don't know? How about, hmm, Obladi, Obladi, you like that no. one? No. Why do you mean no? No. Okay, all right. He's in a good mood. So we'll continue <laughs> our show uh, with or without Leo. But David Cohen, the preposition of this movie is uh, interesting. He thinks you're a fool on the hill. I think that's ah. the problem. Well, yeah. I, either that or I'm just really a nowhere man to him. <laughs> it's just that's what it is. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Leo? He'd rather be with Eleanor Rigby at this point. Yes. No doubt. Leo, am I wrong? I don't know who that is. Oh, could you just do me a favor, Leo? Help. Help us. No. No. He needs somebody. Help. And not just anybody. I mean, I need help here, there, and everywhere, Leo. Do you know what I'm saying to you? He doesn't want to just do this helter-skelter. No. No, no, no. All it's right. not my birthday, though. Is it? it was my birthday last week. Did you remember the, hearing the birthday song? Yeah, he's, he's not very into it. So let's move on. Yeah. We well, could do this for the rest of the exactly. show, but I don't think anybody would want to listen to it. He's not getting the references. And, no. Okay, so here's the question. If there were no Beatles, would society in the 60s have been any different, David Cohen? Yes or no? I don't think society would have been any different. No. Not at all? Not even... 
I mean, the, 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 the message of the Beatles' music, forgetting the music for a minute, the society, the message of the Beatles' music. No, I think they were part of anything? the 60s. I don't, they didn't create it. I don't think that they were, they were part of it, and they steered it in a direction musically, but like from a popular or, or you know, social sort of thing that was right. happening in the 60s, they had no impact. So on. you think they reflected, or did they guide or add to the pop culture? I think day? musically they helped guide it to a certain extent. And that's it. Okay, so you don't yeah. think that um, no, because they were they were told by their manager not to comment on anything politically or anything like that. So they really weren't, you know, spokespeople. It wasn't right. until much later that Lennon started his whole crusade, but that was after the Beatles. Now so that's there, politically though. Now what about just the message of love? I mean, that was it's the show in Vegas. It's been pretty yeah. popular. And I mean, again, seems I, to be the message of they, their music. They, I don't think they created it. They they perpetuated the the concept yeah i mean that's my take on it. i think uh, you know they were they, they were instrumental and no pun intended there uh-huh. um <laughs> in, in changing the course of popular music but i think the 60s would have turned out the way it did regardless of whether Do they were part think of it they, now here's a, all right, so let's talk musically then did that just kill your whole show yeah that destroyed <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> So let's, all right. Well, let me change my answer then. The <laughs> '60s would not have happened without the Beatles. I just, I better? just think that the world may have been a little harsher without the message of love that the Beatles presented in. But the love 60s. was a thing already. They, they, it, it, you know what I mean? Love there were love ins. Love existed before the Beatles. There were love ins. There were peace ins. There was, it was a whole drug call. It was all about loving thy neighbor, right? And all right, that but, stuff. Right, but but uh, the Beatles reflected it back and made it and and, and uh, we just say amplified the message through the the their songs were the background to everything that was done from sixty two to seventy. It was the background of every barbecue, the background of every, of maybe not of Woodstock, but every, you know. Of every barbecue? <laughs> well, wherever you went, the Beatles, would, I remember it, the, the kids would come over with a guitar and start playing Beatles Oh, sure, songs. yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, it, it was uh, a huge, it's, it, it, I would say this, let's go back up. <laughs> Beatlemania, let's just go from the 62 I to feel 60. bad now. <laughs> you didn't coach me on this one. <laughs> no, but 62 to 70, is, uh. can you describe anything from 1970 to present that is Beatlemania esque? That was for those no. eight years as nah, there'll never be anything like that again. Right, which is my point. Right, in some level, like it, the, right. the pop culture of the day was almost in some ways not. I mean, there was a lot going on in the sixties, but it was defined by or reflected by the Beatles' music. Or at least the Beatles music was the soundtrack. I think the Beatles music was part of the soundtrack of the 60s, yes. Right. Yes. And now, you're musically inclined, so to speak, than I am. Do you feel the music of the Beatles um, affected other bands? Oh, absolutely. And without them, would those other bands existed? Have existed, um, like the Turtles or you know things like yeah, that? Yeah, no, I, that's a good question. There probably are people who wouldn't have gotten into music if it wasn't for the Beatles. Absolutely. Right. So this movie presents that idea. I think what they do, they do it. It's a nice love story, and it uh, it has a you know somewhat of an interesting twist here and there. Mm-hmm. Leo, did you like the movie by the way uh, yesterday? Yes. And and do you think that you would like to see uh, more movies about the Beatles or anything like that? I mean, what do you think of the Beatles generally? Good. Do you want to see a Beatles movie? You think? Mm-hmm. What, do, David Cohen, what movie would you suggest that the Leo should see? I I would suggest you, Leo watch A Hard Day's Night. Did you ever hear? You know the song Hard Day's Night, right, Leo? Yeah. And do you think you would like to see the movie? I don't know. Tell him what it's about. Well, um, Hard Day's Night was about a day in the life of the Beatles at the height of Beatlemania when they were conquering America and the the phrase Beatlemania was, or the term Beatlemania was coined. And it recreated what their life was like at the time. And it captured, uh, from what I hear, I was too young to remember, but it captures very uh, adequately and very specifically not only what was going on at the time of the Beatles, but why they were so popular. Right. Not just musically, which is apparent in the movie, but also just their personalities and the way they, they brought a kind of joy and, and humor to the world, which was needed at that time because there were certain bad things that had happened prior to them coming onto the scene. So they were like the perfect perfect band, the perfect time, perfect place to, to explode like they did. And this movie captures a lot of that. Leo, does that make any sense to you? 
No. Okay. <laughs> Let me put it another way. It has really good music, and you really get to know the Beatles. They talk to you and to each other. Is that yeah, pretty it's really, cool? It's really fun. You want to do that? Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Well, so I see that I went. I, I could have just cut to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's this art and a science communicating with a seven year old, especially one that's not in a very talkative mood today. I was Leo. trying to straddle our audience and, and and Leo at the same time and beautiful. failed miserably. Leo, tell me what give me one song you would like to hear right now from the Beatles. Just give me one. Mm. Cause, what you want to hear Penny Lane right now? No. No. How about Oh Blah Dee Blah Da? No. How about Let It Be? I want to hold your hand. You want to hear all that? Hold he your just, hand. No, he just wants to hold your hand. Though, oh, I think there we goes. go. I'm right here, Leo. No. <laughs> <laughs> you like that song, right? Want to hold your hand? It's one of the best. Well, we'll come back. We'll play it in the break. Come back right after this, and we're going to continue talk all things Beatles and what would life be without the Beatles. Explore a little bit about if you're going to introduce the Beatles to someone, and you only have five songs to do it in, what songs would you do it with? Leo, any ideas? No. All right, we'll find out. We'll find out when we get back. Right after this, on everything old is new again. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Oh yeah, I'll tell you something. I think you'll understand When I say that's something I want to hold your hand Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani with David Cohen, the uh, Beatles aficionado extraordinaire, right here on Everything Old is New Again. And we're here with uh, seven-year-old Leo Viviani, who wanted to hear I Want to Hold Your Hand. Now, was that the Beatles just now? No. How do you know? I can recognize her voice. Good for you, my man. Who was that? Jack Malik. Jack Malik from the movie yesterday, yesterday, right? Now, I was watching this movie with Leo, and Leo is a little bit into the Beatles to begin with, on his own. I don't know how it happened. We're not getting an explanation. That's fine. But when we were watching the movie, what were you saying to Daddy to do on his cell phone all the time? Write the song. Yeah, he wanted me to write the song. As the songs were coming up, they have 17 songs in the movie. Uh, he would say, write that song down, because uh, he wanted me to be able to play it for him, the Beatles version, no, when we got home. No, no, What? No. What? What'd you do it for? To, to, send, to, to send to Uncle John. Right, to send to Uncle John, because Uncle John wanted to see the movie, too, and wanted to show him and tell him what was in it, right? Mm-hmm. It was exciting, wasn't it? Now, what did you think of the movie? It was good. It was good. Okay. How'd your head feel after banging it against the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, David Cohen, if you were going to introduce, whether it be a, you, we had a discussion before, and it's a great idea, a younger person into the Beatles, give me an idea what what songs you think that you would uh, you would lay out. Well, off, just off the top of my head, uh, Octopus's Garden, Oh Blah Dee Blah Da, uh, the continuing s- the continuing saga of Bungalow Bill, the continuing story of Bungalow Bill, Yellow Submarine, right, and Birthday. Ah, okay. Birthday. Those are my five. Now, Leo, out of those five, do you know Octopus's Garden? Yes. Who sings that one? Uh, Ringo. You bet, you little devil. How about Oh, Blah, Dee, Blah, Da? You know that one, right? Oh. Yeah, and you like it, right? Uh-huh. All right, the other one, Bungalow Bill, you haven't heard that one yet. We'll, we'll play that for you. How about Yellow Submarine? We all live... You know, know. Oh, you know who sings it? No. Oh, that's okay. I think I think that might be... Ringo. How about birthday? Remember that one? We played that one on my birthday last week? Yes. Did you like it or you didn't like it? No. Not so much? Uh, he likes Revolution, right? Is that the new one? Mm-hmm. Okay, good man. You say you want a revolution. That's it. That one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, to me, what I would do is I would introduce... Now, this wouldn't necessarily have to be a younger person. Anyone that's not listened to the Beatles before. Just to show some variety and some depth... I would go with Revolution. Which one? The the, the slow one, the single, fast one, the single version, the faster one, the faster version. Let it be to show a little bit of. Uh, I mean, it's nice little words of wisdom there. Penny Lane, which I think is quite a. Uh, I mean, a, 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 Leo Penny Lane. Yes or no? Come on. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it is. A, you have a to perfect. Like it. You must like. There's no choice. Yeah, exactly. Then a couple other ones. Something. Remember something by George. Who sings something, Leo? 
Yeah, That's George Harrison, yeah. And then while my guitar gently weeps, just to show a little... I don't know, I think George Harrison added to the pie there that is, is uh, unfortunately overlooked a little too much. What do you think? What do you think, David Cohen? Um Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you on Penny Lane and Revolution, and I throw in one of those George Harrison songs, probably something, okay. if you're trying to get somebody like... Uh, I would also... Um, Hard Day's Night, the song, for sure. Okay, there you go, Leo. Uh, just the immediacy of that song, and just, just I, I think it just captures all the energy. And um, I would go with something a little more, you know, obscure to get somebody in there, like, um, uh, like Hey Bulldog or, um, or um, And Your Bird Can Sing, something like a little... Blackbird? A little out there. Yeah, okay. How about yeah. Revolution Number 9? Leo, do you like Revolution Number 9? Number 9? Remember that number one? Number 9? That's, a cra- that's the crazy one, remember? No. Yeah, you don't like that one. Yeah. You know, that, I would keep that one out of the out of the mix. And and I don't the, remember it. I know because it's not memorable. Uh, I would also play side two of Abbey Road to any any new listener. Yes, yes. Uh, arguably the best album side in the history of recorded music. And the ending we need to talk about, which we will right after this when we say well, we're staying here. But Leo, you have to go to your birthday party. So thank you so much for contributing. We're so happy to. Have hey, you, you say it's your birthday? It's my birthday too. I'm glad it's your birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. You going to sing that song today for your friend at the party? No. Okay. Well, you're going to bring him a Beatles album, right? No. No. You would if it was 1967, you would. We will never mention the Beatles again. How's that? <laughs> Yay. All right. Good boy, Leo. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Leo. See you later, Leave my man. Leave the headphones. You did beautifully. We're proud of you. Have a great day. Love you. Close the door. Love you. Bye, Angelica. Bye, Angelica. Oh, Angelica's staying, I think. But you can come back down when, when Leo's gone. <laughs> Escort him out of the house, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just come on and when you're done. Okay, so, now, let's stop for a moment. Get redirected here. Yes? Yes? What other shows are you doing? We're doing just the Beatles show, and then we have an interview, and that's it. Wah, you want to sit on the Beatles show? Yes or no? Maybe. Sit on the Beatles show. Do you know anything about the Beatles? Mm-hmm. They play it 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so make sure Leo's okay and then come on back down, okay? All right, see you later. All right. Let me resume. Now, why, I, here's the thing. The second uh, side of Abbey Road has got a mishmash of songs. It's got something on it, for sure. I remember that. But it's, it's, uh, it's got s- some interesting songs. But the end end, where you've got this, what is it, about five songs? Her Majesty? Go- yeah, from Her Majesty forward, about five or six songs. That's the last one. No, I'm talking about th- th- with, the, with the end and... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It, well, There's a mishmash of, like, it's yeah. just put together, one, like, One runs songs. into another. Yeah. Right. Why do you... Now, Paul admits saying that he wrote these and they're you know they're half songs. They never got them. He really didn't get songs finished. I'm just going to put them all together and, and let it go, and it worked. But w- why do you think it works? I mean, it's they're not songs unto themselves. Well, probably right? because if you think about it, they used the the ca- the catchiest hooks of what would have been independent songs and strung them together. Right. Uh, but they also did it in a way where they could bridge it, so it, it made sense to move from one to the other. So they might have changed the uh, something about each one to, to hook them together easier. Um, so you really, you were hearing, like, maybe the best of six or seven, what ultimately would have been great Beatles songs, but, like, the best of, and just combined into one. It sounded like right. a, just one long jam. And uh, the guitar solos at the end... Yeah. In the end, I'm sure everyone knows this. It's a fan. I mean, they were performed one after the next by each, not not Ringo, but by each other Beatle right. uh, right. playing guitar solos. You yeah. can clearly hear their style one yeah. to the next. I think it's pretty cool when you you know focus on and try to listen to what they did. What do you think of... Uh, so so what, let me back up. You think that, that that would be the way to get someone into the Beatles... Uh, more than would you play album sides, uh, like a Sgt. Pepper whole album, uh, or would you just do singles? What would be the way to go here? I, I'd probably play an album as opposed to just different songs, and I would either play, like I said, S- Abbey Road, at least side two. Um, I would play the soundtrack to Hard Day's Night, 
Or I would I would play uh, Revolver is one of my favorites, and if not Revolver, then like Rubber Soul. That right. would that would be my the big the big four. I agree, but the only thing to think about there is they changed almost every album changed a lot and evolved their styles. So with Leo now, it's kind of odd because he loves the Ed Sullivan versions of the Beatles and all those songs, even up to you know Help. And then the other songs, it, he looks at the pictures, he looks at the videos, and they're totally different people yeah. in his mind. Yeah. And the music is oh, very so different. So stick to the beginnings with him. Yeah, There's he, so much stuff in the early days that they did. True, but he but he really does enjoy the stuff later on as well. Oh, so it's okay. it's a really odd thing that that, but it's frenetic. Like you're just you're throwing like he doesn't have the evolution of it. And I guess we sort of had where we you hear the earlier stuff and present and go forward. Right. Um, he's hearing the Let It Be and he's hearing Hard Day's Night at the same time. Well, the important thing yeah. is that he, he, he likes, he appreciates the music. Maybe the thing to do is just to throw different songs at him and see what sticks right. and what doesn't. I don't think like conceptually he's at an age now where he, he could appreciate the evolution that they went through. Right. Um, so, yeah, maybe and it's just that, movies and songs. A, yeah, he's not listening to a full album or album side either. Uh, he may not you know, he's have the patience for that, you know? Um, he picks songs. You could also do, what about the Beatles' number one hits, that CD? Oh, that's not you know, a bad all idea. their number one songs. Right. Just a place to start. Not a bad idea. I, I, I think he, he um, is open-minded enough that he hears all the... And he's distinctive. He'll, he'll say he doesn't like a song, and that's fine, too. But um, when he gets on a song, he's going to play it, and he's going to play it, and play it. So I, think, I, I just think it's odd, in a good way, that a band that is that broke up 50 years ago is... In some way, from this movie, for a younger generation is—I'm not going to say the generation because it's not everybody in, that, in his class—but for someone younger to be reinvigorated by this music because this movie makes it contemporary for them, right? If that right. makes sense, yeah. You know, because so. I mean, if you think about it, if the movie can do that to the songs, it's not even the original Beatles playing the songs. Yeah. It just shows you how timeless the songs themselves are. And then when you hear the original. Beatles singing it, which is uh, obviously there's no comparison. Right. You know he's going to get hooked on that. So uh, yeah, it's for that reason, I think the movie serves a good purpose. But you heard him tell you the name of the character in the movie. Yeah, that's just sad. right now. That's really sad. No, it's sad, but it's got to get him off that. <laughs> no, but he he knows enough <laughs> about it that he knows it's not the Beatles. He knows it's this character. Right. So like he's very. Uh, hey, ultimately he may just like the movie, you know, and he likes the songs in the movie, and he may not like the rest of the Beatles songs. That's... No, he likes he likes them all. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back right because everything all is new again everything old is new again is sponsored by the law office of douglas viviani douglas viviani has been providing quality legal service for over 26 years we're a general practice firm and can handle any legal matter you may have for a reasonable fee if you're involved in a car accident starting a business planning your estate or need a criminal attorney please call 631-681-1910 or email us at vivianilaw at aol.com for a free consultation get the justice you deserve contact the law office of douglas viviani at vivianilaw at aol.com now back to america's entertainment pop culture talk show everything old is new again with douglas viviani and david cohen Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani with uh, David Cohen, uh, Beatle uh, Mania himself. He, when he walks around, he's I just personify. Yes, you're chased and followed down the streets. I'm not, but I do scream at other people and chase them down the sc- street. So in that way, I personify you're the anti- Beatlemania. Beatlemania. or the reverse Beatlemania. Yes. Uh, uh, well, listen, we're talking about, <laughs> about uh, yesterday, the movie a little bit, and what, if anything, it effect it has on what's going on in today's uh, music scene and kids and what have you. And that was, of course, The Long and Winding Road, sung by the actor in the movie and I think what's interesting in this movie is there's 17 Beatles songs you only hear one song all the way through uh, there's a, a lot of nods to songs and, and he as a, as a 
performer performs them okay, and even someone that's performing Beatles songs okay carries the day. Does that make sense? These songs are so strong. Someone that's not a great performer still it still sounds good. <laughs> it's yeah. right. I what mean, was I'm, it? What was the song that they did all the way through? Do you help? Know? And they did a huh. modern version. He was very angry, okay. and he used it as a as a way to show his anger and angst right. um, <clears throat> on okay. a rooftop. But uh, the thing with with yesterday, I just want to say my aspect of this is that. I think that they tried to go down a road where they tried to show what the world would be like without the Beatles. That was one aspect of this, and I think they failed at that miserably because they would say, okay, Oasis, the band, doesn't exist. Coca-Cola doesn't exist. There's certain things, whether you can figure out why they don't exist or not, that's what they did. But they didn't show any difference in society, and I think just to... For movie-making purposes, it would have been good to show people a little angrier or whatever you think your theory is of how society would have been different without the Beatles. Just amp it up and show it better so that when the music is presented by this actor um, who is the only one on the planet that knows the Beatles' music, so he's the Beatles, right? And it takes off and it takes off by storm people love this music to show how it changes society i know that's that's very dra- it's but you have to be dramatic in movies you yeah know? you have to make a choice you right? can't be subtle it was so subtle it was so subtle it was it was missing mm-hmm. no one missed the beatles they didn't know the beatles exist right. but society did not change at all because the Beatles didn't exist. So that's where I think they went wrong. To me... Yeah, they could have picked you know, something, right? Right right or wrong? Uh, they could have made that choice and made made it a more interesting movie. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. You know, maybe more s- social strife. Maybe there were more right. assa- another assassination. Something. Yeah, maybe we didn't get out of Vietnam. Something right, like that. Exactly. Right? Something. Something. Who knows? Right. right. Um, maybe there was no baby boomers because there wasn't as much love. I don't know. Whatever you want right. to say. Yeah. Something to make it dramatic so that there's a difference and all of a mm. sudden this guy performs this music. Why people are catching on to it so much. We've right. missed this. I yeah. know that's pie in the eye, pie in the sky, but making a movie to me, you've got to really, the subtleties are not too yeah. subtle in that movie. What, what I always think about is if the Beatles started now, right? If, if these guys were growing up in this age they probably would not sound anything like they did that's my first guess they would sound very different i think they would have gone more towards the experimental side of i think where they ultimately sort of ended up um, but even further mm. so and the other interesting thing is so words, if they were born now is what you're saying yeah like if 20 they were years born, ago if they were se- let's say they were ni- you know john lennon when at the height of their popularity was like 21 22 years right. old today i don't think they obviously wouldn't have been influenced by the same uh, old style rock and roll, right? They would have been influenced by the music they were listening, uh, they were growing up listening to, which right. was rap, which was uh, some funk, which could have been anything, any. But it wasn't what they well, then, they originally that, that, did. So, so I think their music would have sounded a lot different, and and not any worse. But it would really be freaky, right, to hear what the Beatles would sound like. Right, th- that was really, uh, sort of interrupted there, but the, the thought came to me is a songwriter uh, and a songwriting team and a songwriter like George, they're songwriters, they obviously had talent, they may even have been geniuses, right? So could they and would they, what would they have written today? Would something have been a different song yeah. and, and so forth? Um, and, and what would it have been? I think and, it's really interesting to and, think about. And with it. social media today, like who knows if John would have ever have met Paul, right? Because now you've got Facebook, you've, you're hanging around with different people, you're making friends differently. So would they have ever met at that, at that uh, party? Plus we're very or? individualistic too. Right. And no, no one's really, let's go back. Everyone says this, even Billy Joel says this. When the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan, they showed what it would be like to be in a band right. and know all four members of the band as individuals. And but now no, it's just all individuals. There's no Ed Sullivan either. Right. right. So there, there, there isn't that platform that a band could say, okay, once you made it to this show, then you've made it. That doesn't exist anymore. No, it, and it, if it does exist, it's American Idol and, uh, you know, what's the other one with Simon Cowell, the America's Greatest, whatever it is. But musically... But I'm saying yeah, that's the only place to get a national exposure are those TV shows, and they only and they promote, do that. for the they most part, and, one person. And they wouldn't be on that those shows, right. So... Right. It, yeah. America's Got Talent. I, I presume America's Got Talent once in a while has a band, although I've never even seen a band on it. Uh, if, rarely. A couple of people, yeah. So bands are out, as uh, per se. Are, well, better question. Are bands out? It's a concept it's, now. And there's no... 
Right. So the other point I want to make is there's no uh, reason to believe that even if they did form that band, that they would have stayed together as long as they even did. Because these days, everybody's got side projects, right? So you might be in this band, but you're doing something with that band, and you're also in band uh, band number three, and you're doing something on a solo level. So, you know, the concept of the band is very loose right now, and... Um, yeah, I, you know, thinking about it, they might have only happened at the time that they were in the history of the world. That was the time and place for them to be, right? Right. That's a strange, a really strange thing. Because yeah. I don't think now there could, who knows, a band of kids could come along in theory, st have a in mind that we want to be together. And I don't we, think it's going to happen again. I'll tell you what, I, I don't think ever. it's ever going to happen again because right, right now, the way the world is, it's splintered, right? There isn't anyone that appeals to all generations. Right. It doesn't happen anymore. You choose, And it's done that way by design. You choose the audience that you want to appeal to and you go after that. And that, that's why I don't think it'll ever Because when the Beatles again. came over, you hear them on the airplane, if you see the YouTube videos or whatever, they're talking about uh, they're going to be, in uh, lack of a better word, I don't know if they use this word, but conquering America. They didn't say, we're going to appeal to the youth of America, and that's why we want to do... They didn't right. segregate it. They didn't have that then. It was, we're going we're gonna to appeal to everybody. And that's what their goal was. Right. And they achieved it. But what you're saying is that's not a goal for anybody anymore. I don't think anyone would be thinking that way anymore. Right. Because it's almost impossible. And, right. and and you know you want to be a YouTube star and you want to get your own. It's all about getting your own followers and whoever they are, you'll take them. But you're certainly you certainly don't think that you know as as a millennial uh, star on YouTube that you're going to appeal to anyone out of the you know your 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 followers your right. you know your fanatics. But it's also very individualistic. There's right. no thought. Of being a team. Collaborating. It right. means nothing to these people. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of, I mean, someone from 15 years ago till now, let's say, even turn of the 2000s, till now, that's a brand new artist, that's an artist of more than one person. That's the driving force or the person. So is it, what does that say about a society? What does it say about the Beatles? What does it say about uh, the time, 60s versus now? It certainly says, I think... We're very much more selfish and care about ourselves more. The youth, maybe. Uh, I, I, I don't know, know what to say. I, I, it's I think very it's just, individual. I think it's probably cyclical. I think it'll come back. I mean, you, to collaborate, this radio show would be nothing without you. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> but it, 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 there's a collaboration. Right. If I sat here and talked as and had these topics and had other guests and whatever, but was just me, it, it would fall flat. This is just my yeah. opinion, but I, it would fall flat on its face. Some things, and I think songwriting is one of them, lends itself to collaboration. In fact, I was at a meeting once. It was so interesting. They had a, to put, to put a, a, took a paper clip out, and they said, write down individually the uses for this paper clip in the next, uh, whatever it was, five minutes. And then they said, okay, now join together with three other people. We have four of you together. Four of you, we want you to tell us the youth uses of this paperclip. And you can't use the old ones. So you had to come up with new ones. And you still came up, the collaboration came up with more than four times the amount of uses for this paperclip than you as an individual. And it shows yeah. when you have a collaboration under the right circumstances, you're much more productive. Yes, yeah, there's the synergy there. I mean, yeah, John and Paul, probably as individual artists, if they hadn't met, probably wouldn't have been as prolific as they were because they competed against each other. They pushed each other. Even like Oh Blah Dee Blah Da, which, you know, it is what it is. I, I kind of, it's a fun song. It's a light song, whatever. Jo Paul had that song. He knew what he was doing. They were all three of them working in the studio for the longest time. They could not get it down right. Paul has said this. John notoriously comes in late at that time frame. He's, hey, what are we doing now? Uh, we're doing Oh, you're doing that again? Okay. And they're like, well, we're having trouble with it. He goes, what about this? And he sits down at the piano and, he, and, he, and all the piano parts he starts laying out. And they go, that's it. It's perfect. That's it. That's right. it. Without him, that song would never, never have been able to have been form, right, what it was. Created. So, you know, it, he, he, he wasn't just pushing, it was also adding. And he, so he added 10% of the song, but it made the song, whatever you want to say. Right. Um, that's, you know, missing when you don't have a collaboration. That's just my thought. Well, ho hopefully the, w the music industry will come back around to that. All you need is one group Correct. to prove that it works. And then, and then suddenly the trend copies. will be back to that. We'll be back. Hey, right, this is the Beatles movie. And all things Beatles. This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen.
Desmond says to Molly, girl, I like your face And Molly says this as she takes him by the hand Oh, Brady, oh, Brady, that goes on La, 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 goes on Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again Douglas Viviani with David Cohen, our resident Beatles aficionado And we're talking uh, all things Beatles and inspired by the movie yesterday That was a little piece of uh, a portion of the movie yesterday where at the end of the movie, I'm just going to give it away. I don't care. <laughs> it's fine. Go for it. It's, it's, it's closing credits. The the uh, hero uh, is now um, just a regular guy again, but he's still promoting and, and pre- presenting Beatles music to the world that never had it before. And he's in a classroom of 40 kids or so, and they're all learning that song together. And it's sort of a nice, touching moment in the movie side of things to show how um, so, somewhat this music is kind of timeless. How does it all get resolved in the movie that they didn't exist and he admits it and then tell, explains to people who they were? How, how does that all yes, get wrapped and he, up? Yes, and he says, I'm not charging for any of this music that I've created. I did not create it. Something happened. I don't know how. Here are the people that did create it, and here's the music. I'm putting it out on social media. Everybody in the world can have all this music for free. I see. Um, okay. But you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's this fantasy. But it's it's really it's just it's very different movie. It's not a great movie, but it's a very good theme that you could springboard. It could have been done better. But why know. hasn't there you know with Rocket Man and Bohemian Rhapsody, I, there's never been a movie about the Beatles, right? Right about the band. I think there might have been like some lame attempt. There was but, a TV movie. If you remember this one, yeah. they go, "Where are we going, boys? To the top, to the very top." Like I don't even know they ever did that, but that was like their. You remember that movie? Yeah, I, I'm just it. surprised they haven't done like a biopic about them. You know. It's, that is very interesting. They've done their own anthology. You know that, right? Uh, but right. it's not a it's not a movie. Is it too big a subject? Maybe. I don't know. I don't maybe. Know. I mean, they could try to recreate what it was like at the beginning, Beatlemania. I don't know. Or maybe at the you, end, the you breakup because yeah, it's more dramatic. You just can't do the whole career. It's too it's too much for yeah. one movie, isn't it? Probably. You know. Uh, but I I think that it's um, it's interesting to see uh, that my seven year old you know is picking out little things like he's watching John Lennon play the guitar and especially in the beginning Lennon's legs are far apart he knows that detail I how mean, many how many how many different forms of music can you say has continually like captured interest of generation after generation not I just two, think it's two, unreal. one band yeah. one band not even just a genre of music one uh, band th- this was organic with him I know this is subjective but if it happens to him it's got to be happening elsewhere how is it that a 7 year old is listening to music and just is turned on by it and really right. into it that's 50 years old if you were in 1960 that means you're born in 60 let's say you listen to music at, at the 1970s that would be analogous to listening to the music that existed in the 1920s. I can't think of... Uh, well, I, I, th- I think I've pinpointed the reason why the Beatles music, Beatles music just consistently, generation after generation, catches on. And I think it's because, and I'm just talking personally what it does to me, it, it just it makes me happy. It's like right. if I'm in a bad mood or whatever, and I just put on a Beatles song, I just start feeling better. Right. You know, and I, I think they somehow, you know, cosmically caught on to the concept of, of music, not just being good technically and you can dance and hum it and all that, but, but it just transforms your mood. How do they do that? How do you, you know, it's crazy. And it? there's a variety of it. There right. are songs right. that when you're down, maybe you know you you like let it be, and you, you you need some advice. Boom, you got some advice. You you go into your high school reunion. You think about in my life or something like that. You 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 uh, want to you know just have fun. Hard days, night. Right. It's just it's amazing how they touched upon all the different emotions, but none of it was for the most part. Even though they were going through some negative times, and while my guitar gently weeps is kind of a negative idea like what's happening guys but even that is done in such a way that you it's so beautiful that you yeah most a smile on your face right exactly you know exactly. it's just a it's really a work of art um that i think people are still catching on to based on the this movie's made a hundred million and it's a nothing movie it made like, right. it was like a five million dollar budget yeah you I can mean, argue it's just it. exploiting beatles songs that's but, the other thing i was going to ask you you know you haven't seen it why haven't you seen it? Maybe that's the reason. 
Yeah, I, well, first of all, the concept to me seems like ludicrous. I right. mean, yeah, it's something to think about when you're, you know, taking a shower. Like, what if the Beatles right. didn't exist and I, I thought of all the songs? <laughs> right. Like, suddenly, I like it'll be my songs. And someone went with that <laughs> stupid notion and turned it into a movie and and capitalized, you know, I guess invested in the rights to play the Beatles songs, right? Because that that costs something. Mm-hmm. Um, but took the shot and said, hey, maybe I'll make some money off this. I, I can't think of any other reason why someone would do that. So I'm looking at it a little cynically, and, and especially since the movie itself is not totally critically acclaimed. Understandable, it's enjoyable. Right. Especially when, in your case, you're introducing the Beatle music to a new generation. I think that's great. Right. And if the movie serves no other purpose but that... I think that's good. And also one thing that you're missing, because it's not shown <clears throat> very much on the preview, more than the Beatles, it's a love story. So it's 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 the Beatles are almost se- as equal to, let's say, the love story. Uh, and the Beatles music, you're only getting clips. You're only getting um, 10 seconds here, 15 seconds there of 16 songs. They don't play one song all the way through. Oh, so not enough to get so, sued. Yeah, yeah, No, I think they bought just the clips. Yeah, I don't think right. they bought the rights to the entire songs and all mm-hmm. that. And uh, I, I, um, I really, it's interesting like you say that because it's very true. It's it's. It's so interesting. It's the, you're capturing, you're grabbing onto something that's so hot and so uh, such a such an important property, and you're just taking on like one little percent of it, making a movie out of it, and making a hundred million dollars. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just grabbing a little shadow of of what it was. Yeah. And today you make a hundred million dollars out of it. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Something just doesn't feel right about it. No, but it, yeah. yes, I agree. But it also is an odd thing that that. Yeah, you can do that, right? What is that 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 thing, the Beatles, Beatlemania, what is so strong about it that you can just right. kind of grab a little piece of it and make a movie out of it and and reach so many people? It's you know what I'm saying? Like it's an ah, odd. Totally you're not even you're not even very weird. It's not even the Beatles music played by the Beatles. It's right, by some right, guy right, and he's changing right. the intonations. He's not that good. You're only hearing bits and pieces of the songs. For a Beatles fan, it's a very frustrating movie because you're not hearing any of the music <laughs> for a long period of time. Uh, you're hearing like you know the most of it here is like 20 seconds of a of a song. Um, but it's rewarding because again, yes, because I think because my son <laughs> and I think a whole other generation is at least considering. Yeah, maybe I'll turn on a Beatles song now after that movie. What the heck? Let me see what this is all about. Yeah, and, and also at the risk of it's just, I mean, Beatles. I mean, it's talk about oversaturation, right? I mean, every book and every everything has come out about them that can possibly be that could come out about them. So it's like ad nauseum already with the Beatles. Well, I'm probably like most others, like you are. Until this movie, I literally have not put on a Beatles album or a Beatles song personally myself. It's got to be 20 years. I wow. just saturated myself yeah. from like you 15 got... to 40. I right. was just, I all the time. And after a while, okay, that, you know. Yeah, and then when you're, but when you're away from it for a while, right. right, and you go back, you're like, oh, yeah, why did I stop listening? To this? Exactly. This is good. And when you've got someone else selfishly to share it with. To share it with that's important. This little guy wasn't in such a good mood today, but you know he really. Yeah. You could tell. But I wanted him at least to answer some of these questions. He's seventy. Knows who's singing what song. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I didn't know that good. at the time. So no. you know, he's who knows if it'll it'll stay with him or not. Who knows? Well, but, if it, even know. if it just spurs his interest in music in general, that's that's amazing. Right. Right. So that's great. why I, I think that the movie is, uh, has some level of significance. It's certainly not a great movie. It's a cute little movie. It's a love story. It's an interesting idea. Um, could have certainly. Be, I'm surprised, it, but with, with this director, it could have been a lot done a lot differently, a lot of better, more dramatic. We should ask somebody we interview soon who's yeah. like a director. Like, I think that's a fair question to ask. Like, why in the industry hasn't anyone even approached the subject of doing a, like a biopic about the Beatles? Right. I'd like to know. That's an interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, and now, so like you said, if this guy just took a piece of that and made so much money off it, why not just go for that whole thing? Right, right. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, but you know, then you got a whole thing: who you're going to cast and who's it. You know, it's going to be a yeah, lot of true. a lot of criticism. Every decision. I think Star Trek is tough. Star Trek Discovery and doing a new Star Trek series. Think about the Beatle Mania and trying to. But then again, most Beatle fans that grew up with them are fifty plus. So when they're not you know, necessarily going to be your audience now, exactly. your audience, and maybe that's maybe that's why they're not doing. But they did it with Queen, they did it with Elton John. So why not the Beatles? Right, right. It's true. I, it, I really, you know, it's worth a shot. Yeah, and I let's think do it. <laughs> we can put up a hundred million each easily, uh, personally. Hundred million what <laughs> thoughts? Maybe, but yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, it's it is well. 
with a biopic now, you know, you're going to need to get permission from the estates. Oh, it's going to it's, it's going to cost so, a lot of money, yeah. but still, yeah, you have to get permission from probably each individual estate, and, and the music's got to be part of it. Maybe that's why they haven't done it. It's, it's just, just impossible. Like legally, it's just too. Now, I think McCartney now finally owns the catalog again. Again, bought it from the, the estate, ones. I think, of Michael Jackson. I believe yeah. there's a whole problem there but so uh you'd be dealing with paul mccartney basically to to make this movie and ringo doesn't count yeah well ringo doesn't own any of the any of the rights yeah or most of the rights anyway that's our discussion of the beatles we try to bring it back to uh to it all here to try to just show that everything old is new again for, you know a band from 50 and 60 years ago is still relevant uh let's hope we are uh, 50 or 60 days or months from now uh <laughs> <laughs> thanks for every for listening we'll be back on everything old is new again next week to enjoy some more pop culture entertainment it's all good clean fun till you just let it be when i find myself in times of trouble mother mary 